Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Brett. Appreciate it. I'm going to go very quickly and introduce you to AnswerDash and talk a little bit about our journey. What AnswerDash does is deliver instant self-service answers to common questions anywhere. And by anywhere, I mean on websites, in mobile apps, and in chatbots. And I'll give a little demo so you'll understand what that means. Um, I've been with the company for about two years now. Uh, let me give a little bit of background. We were founded in 2012 here in Seattle. We were spun out of the University of Washington, and we spent our first two and a half years of life just across the street here in Fluke Hall as part of the uh, co-motion incubator space. I, I talked about we give instant answers. The challenge that our founders faced, who were professors here at UW, was how you can deliver a better experience based on knowing the context of users. And what I show on the next slide is a very typical example of what users uh, encounter. And um, as you'll see, it's one of our sponsors tonight. This is a, uh, a help page for T-Mobile. So we've typed in, what are the taxes on my bill, and got 145 articles to go read. This isn't really helpful, and it's not a knock against T-Mobile. It's very typical of what you see today. So what we've observed is we can do a lot better than this. And this gets even worse when you go onto a small mobile screen. So customers typically feel this, exacer exasperated. Companies pay a lot of money in terms of uh, support costs and so on. I think Steve Jobs summarized it pretty well. He said, we live in an information economy. The problem is that information is usually impossible to get, at least at the right place and the right time. And so our, our core purpose at AnswerDash is to empower people with the right information in the right place at the right time. And we do that by using our predictive algorithms to know what information they need to help them on their journey. And those predictive algorithms are based on the context of the user and their persona. So we can very accurately, actually surprisingly accurately, predict the kind of questions they have. This follows a trend of, of empowerment for self-service that's been going on for decades. It started with ATMs back in the 70s. It's gotten more interesting recently with mobile apps what we call predictive Q&A, and, and then even more recently with chatbots. Uh, Gartner, which is a research firm, said that by 2020, 85% of customer engagements with enterprises won't involve a human. That's only three years away. We've got a long way to go, and I think some of the technology that we're developing is going to help us get there. So let me talk about what AnswerDash does. We have this predictive Q&A engine. What it does is it takes content that a company might have in a knowledge base. Typically, you'll see these in uh, FAQs on websites and so on. We use the context of the user and their persona to deliver the appropriate questions and answers on the three channels that I mentioned, on websites, in mobile apps, and on chatbots. Um, context and persona are key, and I'll give an example. This is PowerPoint. So I can't uh, go out to the web. But you see this tab here. If this were a website and you click on it, the tab pops out. And it predicts the likely questions that I would have. How does AnswerDash work? How does it predict accurately? What are the measured benefits? And if I see a question that I want, let's say the question is, how does AnswerDash work? I click on that. AnswerDash leverages users' context to predict likely questions, deliver relevant answers at the point of interaction with just a few clicks. So that's the idea. You don't have to type searches. You don't have to read articles. Uh, we predict, based on past traffic and context, what the likely questions are. Um, there's a lot uh, that goes on behind the scenes. I'll mention one aspect. That's this suggested Q&A. If you don't find the answer you're looking for, you can always use the old-fashioned method and type it in the search box. We gather all those typed-in searches and then apply AI and NLP algorithms to cluster those so we can provide feedback to the site owner of what are the new questions that they should author because their knowledge base is incomplete. This can be very important if you have a large website with lots of traffic. It's very difficult to determine what are the missing questions. Uh, and by doing that, you can automate the self-service experience. So a couple of examples. These are some of our customers today. Uh, you can see the tab here pops out from the bottom. This is code.org, which te teaches kids how to code online. Uh, Moo.com is one. It pops out from the side. You can see the tab is configurable in terms of location, fonts, colors. We can support text and video, all sorts of content. Um, I mentioned that on websites. You can also see what we do. We have a, a SDK for mobile app development, so you can get the same sort of, of UI and deliver the same sort of experience in mobile apps. Again, it makes it much easier for, for your customers. 
Uh, and then lastly, uh, Facebook Messenger chatbots. We're live on several chatbots today. Uh, the key here is you don't have to type in your question. You merely select a category, and then we predict the likely questions, and then you can select those questions to get your answers. So what's the technology differentiation? I mentioned our NLP clustering algorithms that determine uh, what are the right questions that you should ask to improve your knowledge base. I have one minute to go. Thank you, everyone. We are built on AWS, uh, very scalable, very robust, very secure. Um, and one of the things I want to wrap up with was some of the, what are some of the lessons learned along this journey? I guess the first one I'll mention is not all companies are created alike. We originally came in thinking that every company wants to improve their service. Companies like Nordstrom want to do that, and they're willing to spend a lot of money to do so. Companies like Comcast don't necessarily. So you have to know what your audience is and, and, and know that not all are created alike. The next one, pricing is really hard. Give it lots of thought up front. There are a lot of entrepreneurs out there. When you have a wonderful product, figure out pricing and give it way more thought than you think it might take because it can drive sales or kill sales. Uh, we've gone through several iterations of pricing in our product, and that's something that I think uh, a lot of entrepreneurs can learn from. And the last thing that I'll mention is pick your niche and own it. Don't try to do too many things when you're a small company. Focus is everything. Uh, we originally had a number of different value props that we were all about. Pick your niche and own it. And so with that, I'll stop. And a couple of minutes of Q&A. Any questions about our journey, our product, or anything related to AnswerDash? Yes. Uh, the question is, how do companies go about adopting our product? Um, we have a small snippet of JavaScript that they can insert into their website, and with that, our, our tab will appear on their website. And we also integrate with all of the leading providers of knowledge bases, so Zendesk, Freshdesk, and others. So it turns out it's fairly easy to get the system up and running on a website. For mobile apps, they have to work with our SDK to bake it into the app, which, which makes sense. And for chatbots, um, we work with Facebook Messenger. That's the easiest implementation of all. You just kind of sign up, and we can appear and answer questions on your chatbot channel. What about the? Yeah, so that's where we integrate with uh, the, the knowledge base providers like Zendesk and Freshdesk. We, we don't develop the content, we synchronize with the content that they have. We provide feedback on where you have gaps, where you should add more content. And if I had more time, I'd talk about our future roadmap where we're moving more into creating content. Another question? Yeah, so the question is how do we measure success? Uh, we have two things that we do. One is we deflect support tickets. Support tickets typically cost $10 for a company to service. Uh, with self-service, we can deflect those tickets. And so we do A-B comparisons with our tab on and with our tab off. And we see the ticket submission rate is typically something like 30 to 50% lower when we have our tab on, so the support costs are 30 to 50% lower. Those can be huge. The second one is very similar. We get more conversions on e-commerce sites. If you have questions about a product, you can get them answered. You're more likely to consummate that transaction. We do the same thing. And we typically get 5 to 15% uplift in conversion when we have our tab on our website. Maybe one more? One more question. One more question. One more question. Who are our competitors? There's a couple of small companies out there. One's called NanoRep out of Israel. Another one is called Inbenta out of Spain. And another one is called Alevio out of Australia. All of them are doing similar things and trying to leverage NLP and AI to do it better, faster, cheaper, smarter. Thanks right. very much, everyone.